Cold front number one arrived yesterday, and I think most of y'all in the northern half of Texas definitely noticed it. Well, guess what? We've got more crash of the cold fronts on the way later this week, bringing even colder weather. Let's talk about it in this Tuesday edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. <laughs> Good morning. It is November 26, 2024. I'm Texas Storm Chasers Baldy and Chief David Reimer, along with my magical super duper floating microphone of levitation. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to say we do have more cold fronts on the way. I don't know why I'm proud, but it did make an okay rhyme, so we'll go with that. Uh, well, guess what? It's not going to rain. That It's pretty much the easiest way to put it, even though we're going to have crash of the cold fronts. We're not going to get really much if any rain out of this uh, let's just take a look high res rapid refresh model for today tonight into wednesday guess what we're going to start to see south winds return to the state later today in advance of a much warmer wednesday across the state you can see even with no rain we're going to have plenty of clouds across texas tomorrow maybe a few light showers but we're going to have a lot of dry air in the low levels that should result in a lot of that precipitation evaporating notice that as we go into tomorrow evening crash of the cold front a stronger one is going to be moving into the panhandle we're even going to see some frontogenesis it looks like with some bands of light precipitation uh, dry air in the low levels but can't totally rule out a bit of snow in the northwestern panhandle Wednesday night as temperatures plummet below freezing and we might have just enough lift behind that front to support light snow bands but not really expecting much if any accumulations nevertheless we'll keep an eye on it rest of Texas it's not going to snow sorry well, we are going to have to deal with, especially on Wednesday and Thursday, the increasing wildfire potential. According to the Texas A&M Forest Service, we're expecting high to very high fire danger with locally extreme conditions Wednesday. In the Guadalupe Mountains, Davis Mountains, the Trans-Pecos, the Big Bend, Far West Texas, and the Borderland, Permian Basin, uh, with high fire danger across portions of North Texas, Central Texas, the Brazos Valley, the Concho Valley, the Hill Country, South Texas, the Edwards Plateau, down into the Rio Grande Plains, both Wednesday and Thursday. Yes, even though it did rain it for some last week, well, it doesn't matter because guess what? Things are drying out again. And later this week, as at least the northern half, if not northern two-thirds of Texas, experiences a freeze, we're going to see the end of the growing season. Thus, the grass is going to go night-night, and the plants are going to go night-night for the winter, which means they're going to burn more easily. So, yay. Don't you love my fun ways of describing the weather Let's take a look at the Long Range American Weather Model, the global forecast system. This will take us through Thanksgiving Day into next week. You can see crash of the cold front bringing north winds to the state on Thursday. Maybe some very light sprinkles in deep south Texas. Notice for all intent and purposes, this is a dry front, no precipitation. So again, north winds, breezy at times, bringing dropping temperatures on Thursday to the state of Texas. Expect that. As we go into the weekend, you can see clouds pretty common across the state maybe some very light rain south texas the rio grande valley lower texas gulf coast saturday night sunday morning another reinforcing shot of cold air arrives saturday night and sunday with another very cold start sunday morning and monday morning especially in the northern two-thirds of texas as we go into monday and tuesday Cooler weather will return to the northern half of the state, and we may see some chance for at least light rain across the southern third of the state, though at the very end of that weather model for Monday evening, you saw maybe some sprinkles elsewhere. We'll keep an eye on it. Unfortunately, at this point, we're not seeing any indications of a big widespread precipitation event in Texas over the next seven days, uh, which is why I'm not showing you a rainfall map, because it'd be, well, blank, like my head, bald. Though one could argue, I guess, my brain is empty as well. But that's another discussion for another day. Today's high temperatures, well, it's going to be coolest in Texoma, northwest Texas, along the Red River near the eastern panhandle, highs in the 50s. Otherwise, we're going to see 60s and 70s across the state this afternoon. Still above average, I might add, for late November. So, hey, you know what? Not a bad day with southerly winds returning. Wednesday is going to be hot. We're going to have hot temperatures for late November. We're going to see mid to upper 80s with low 90s 
southern two-thirds of Texas, 70s all the way back up into west Texas, the Red River, Texoma, northeast Texas, borderland far west Texas around El Paso, but take a look, cold front moving into the panhandle, Wednesday going to keep temperatures cooler with 40s, 50s, and 60s, a pretty sharp gradient there, and for what it's worth as we go into well, I guess late tomorrow and especially Thursday. And as the cold front continues to move south, this is Thursday. Thanksgiving is going to be a day where high temperatures will likely occur first half of the day, especially for folks where we see the cold front arrive during the morning hours. Uh, these are high temperatures 6 a.m. Thanksgiving Day, Thursday and onward, meaning those of you in Austin, San Antonio, your high temperatures in the upper 60s will likely be in the morning hours with temperatures falling into the 40s and 50s by the afternoon, gusty north winds. Same thing the Brazos Valley, same thing for southeast Texas. South Texas, deep south Texas, y'all may get lucky. 70s, low to mid 80s, early afternoon before the cold front arrives, dropping temperatures down to the 50s and 60s by the late afternoon. It is going to be a cold day. The northern half of the state highs mostly in the 40s. Low 50s with blustery north winds creating wind chills down to the 30s and 40s. So it's going to be dry, but it will most definitely be a windy Thanksgiving-like day. So expect that. And if you're planning on cooking outdoors, keep in mind, it's going to be chilly. Low temperatures Friday morning. This is The reason I'm showing you low temperatures here is we're expecting to freeze northern half of the state. Temperatures in the 20s to low 30s. We're looking at mostly upper 30s to 40s. Uh, southern half of the state, with the exception of the Rio Grande Valley, we're looking at about 55 to 60 right along the Texas-Mexico border in deep south Texas Friday morning. Now, Friday high temperatures, we're looking at 50s northern half to northern two-thirds of Texas, 60s southern third of the state, so much more seasonable for late November. Warming up on Saturday, we're back into the 60s to upper 70s southern half of the state, still in the 40s and 50s northern half of Texas, and then as we get into Sunday, we're going to have a reinforcing shot of cooler air, especially the northern half of the state. At this point, it looks like a very hard freeze is likely. Sunday morning, temperatures falling well into the 20s. Panhandle, West Texas, Northwest Texas, Texoma, the Arklatex, the big country. The possibility of a freeze, northern third to northern half of the state, we note temperatures falling to near 30 degrees below freezing, probably the northern two-thirds of Texas for Monday morning. Not shown here, it's going to probably have that freezing line farther south, which I'm only mentioning for those of you who have interest in agriculture or outdoor plants, etc. Uh, looking cooler Sunday, Monday, Tuesday especially in the northern half of the state early next week. Uh, in terms of the long-range temperature outlook, well, here's what it looks like across the country. There is high confidence of well below average temperatures, the eastern half of the United States. You can see the purple of doom there. Uh, it's going to feel like January or February, very winter-like for sure. We're on the glancing edge of this in terms of the more dense cold air. So we're just going to glance and blow, which is why we're not going to have highs in the 30s and, you know, low 40s with temperatures down into the teens and 20s for, you know, the northern two-thirds of Texas. Yes, it's going to be chilly, and yes, it's going to be cold, but we're not dealing with the Arctic outbreak of doom here in Texas, at least with this wave. Uh, that is not true for the eastern United States. Uh, in terms of precipitation, well, outside of the rain chances across south Texas next week, not looking good across, well... A good chunk of the United States. We're going to have lake effect snow coming off the Great Lakes because of the cold air mass moving over warmer waters and the gusty northwest winds. And it looks like the west coast is going to have some time to dry out after a couple of rather impressive atmospheric river events over the last week or two. So general outlook for December is we are going to warm back up again. I mean, it's not going to stay cold. We're probably going to have a string of warmer days again especially, you know, Wednesday, Thursday of next week. But the overall pattern will continue to favor the intrusion of cooler air from Canada as we head towards the second week of December, it looks like. So at some point, we'll have another crash to the cold front. They'll become more common 
as you might expect for the winter months in the United States. That's going to be it for your Texas Weather Roundup on this Tuesday. For those of you traveling inter or in the state or outside the state, safe travels to you. Pack patience. I don't envy you traveling by road or plane or boat or train. Ooh, that really rhymed. I'm, I like that. I'm going to have to find that clip and make it a clip, but... That is it, ladies and gentlemen. You can get your local weather forecast, interactive weather, radar. No matter where you are in the country with the free Texas Storm Chasers mobile app, just search for Texas Storm Chasers where you download apps for your device. And as always, thank you for watching us here on the Texas Weather Center YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We really would appreciate it. And you'll get these videos in your inbox, plus live severe weather coverage when needed. Luckily, it won't be needed anytime soon. And if you like this video or any of our other videos, please consider giving us a big old thumbs up. All right, that's it. We'll see you again bright and early Wednesday morning for your pre-Thanksgiving day weather forecast. Have a great Tuesday. God bless.